Hello and welcome. Uh, we are towards the end of the Form 1 work uh, in history. Now, in this work, uh, in today's work, we are looking at the topic, the trans, the transatlantic, transatlantic slave trade, transatlantic slave trade. So in this topic, it is a wonderful topic as well, whereby we are going to look at the slave trade. The slave trade, uh, the origins of trade, slave trade, and uh, how slave trade was uh, emphasized, like in Africa, the Great Triangle slave trade. I will also look at uh, the issues uh, or the problems that were faced by slaves uh, in different points uh, and why slaves were demanded. We will also look at uh, the abolition of slave trade and the reasons why it was uh, difficult to, to stop slave trade and maybe the people themselves, the abolitionists in, uh, and their roles that they wish they played. So just as I said, this is a little bit longer topic and it requires your attention. So let us be together. Let us move together in this topic because uh, it is a very, very good topic and you are going to understand most. Uh, some of the aspects are going to be strange. Some of the things, we know them already. Uh, some of them, they are inhuman things that are uh, all aspects that were there. So let us discover about the transatlantic slave trade. So when we say slave, a slave. A slave is a person who is a property of another person. A person who is the property who is taken as a property of another person. And when we talk of slavery, it is the loss of free will. The loss of free will, or it is the state of being owned by uh, someone as uh, of being owned by someone as a slave. So is the losing of that free will and the state whereby someone is owned uh, that is the process now uh, whereby someone is being owned by another person that is the slavery let's look at the origins of uh, slave trade origins of slave trade we start with africa in africa it existed uh, it existed in some of the african societies from long long ago Ancient Egyptian, uh, Egyptians raided neighboring societies for slaves uh, more than 3,500 years ago. So we see the Egyptians, they were doing that. They were uh, invading others for slaves as well. So it started long, long ago. But what were, what were the causes of slavery in Africa? Number one, the need for domestic, domestic slaves. Uh, lack of machine and money to pay servants uh, uh, forced the chiefs and some rich men to have domestic slaves. So, uh, because there were no machines to do the work, they needed people to work instead of the machines. And also, uh, an unaccepted institution. So, it was an accepted uh, simple institution, especially for domestic work. Uh, females were also taken as concubines as their children became part of natural family. So we see to it that it was accepted in the African society to say, right, uh, uh, people they needed to work uh, in a, or to assist in the work uh, of someone, especially in the domestic work. And on the other hand, we're saying that even the females, they were also taken as slaves, but later on they were turned into concubines. Concubines are like the uh, spare wives or uh, uh, waiting wives were there. And another factor was the uh, crimes and deaths, crimes and deaths. Men who could not, uh, who could give themselves to the, uh, men could give themselves uh, to their creditors when they could not pay their debts. So those who defaulted, who failed to pay the debts, they were uh, surrendering to the other person to say, I have failed, therefore use me the way you like. So sometimes men gave themselves as slaves to get food in terms of uh, starvation or starvation. 
So when there were starvation, there was starvation there, meant that they could go to the people who had something to say, we surrender ourselves to you because they don't have food. We are going to work for you, but you give us food. And debt was also a crime punishable by enslavement. So debt, uh, it was a crime to say, when someone has failed, has defaulted to pay the debt, then that one it was punishable by being a slave. And also wars, wars. They need to profit from wars and the, the captives were taken as slaves. So slaves replaced the labor uh, lost by the death in the battle. So what happened was that during the wars, again, they were capturing others uh, to their side after losing their or others, uh, their soldiers too. So, right, we have lost some soldiers, therefore we are capturing, or we are taking these soldiers from uh, from uh, this other side, or the conquered people, then uh, we use them to replace uh, these other soldiers. So, they were taken as slaves, and they were taken as their soldiers, they were going to uh, replace those who are dead. And also production of wealth. People accumulated wealth through owning and selling slaves. So it also was also there as a source of income. And also slave gangs uh, for plantation. So slaves were needed to work in gangs, that is in plantations and uh, keep open uh, the horses in the Sahara Desert. Uh, yeah, so we are saying that they were also taken uh, to work in the uh, big, big farms. And also ignorance and suspicion of, uh, suspicious of the other. So the widespread of ignorance and suspicion of other races and other uh, peoples. Also lack of full common language in Africa and the difficulties in uh, communication contributed also to slave. Uh, slave trade. So we are seeing that they were just suspicious of others to say, right, maybe others they are planning evil. Before they strike, let us strike and get them as our slaves like that, because they did not know. They were ignorant of the other people. Then uh, let's look at the trans-Saharan trade, the trans-Saharan slave trade. Now, the spread of Islam from Arabia to Africa affected the practice of uh, slavery and slave trading in West and Central and East Africa. So slavery became a component of Islami, Islamic tradition. So we talk of Islam now introducing uh, uh, that uh, trade in, uh, in Africa. So the coming of Islam to the Saharan desert made the countries around around to start practicing slave trade. So it was introduced as Muslims themselves. So the Arabs brought slaves from West Africa and sell them uh, in the North, that is North Africa. From there, slaves were exported to Asian countries, for example, Turkey, Arabia, uh, Iran, and India. So slave trade went as far as Ethiopia, where slaves were captured and sending them to Egypt. So the slaves contributed to the harems, uh, the royal households, and the armies of uh, the Arabs, the Turkish and the, uh, the and Persia. So we, we talk of uh, the slaves, they were working in the royal households uh, in different parts uh, of North Africa and Arabia. And briefly on East African slave trade, the Muslims uh, uh, from Arabia and Persia, they went to Somalia, Mozambique to get slaves. So these Persians and uh, the Swahili intermarried with the Africans, hence producing the Swahili culture. They uh, produced the Swahili and uh, that Swahili culture, the Swahili race and uh, Swahili culture. So the trade contributed to the development of powerful African states. So the neighboring states competed with one another uh, for trade leading to the wars. So by the 20th century, the uh, 1900s, the East African and the Trans-African trade, uh, slave traders were overshadowed by the Atlantic slave trade. So we see to it, 
slave trade was already taking place in Africa. They were taken from West Africa to the north. They were taken from East Africa. They were exported as well as uh, to Arabia and many other areas. So we are saying that in the uh, 20th century, then there was the rise now of uh, the Atlantic slave trade, the Atlantic slave trade. Now let us look at the origins of slave trade in Europe. We have looked at in Africa. Let us look at in Europe. The Greek described Slavic labors of Byzantium as slacobos. So slaves were traded openly in most cities of Marseilles, Dublin, Verdun, and Plague. So they were uh, slaves there. So many were sold to buyers in the Middle East. So the town of Kaffa in the Crimea was called the capital of the medieval slave trade. So over, over land route to the caliphate of the Cordoba took uh, pagan and uh, dualist slaves from Kiev through Lviv and the uh, plague. So these were sold as uh, slaves. So in short, what we are saying here is that uh, in Europe, slave trade was also taking place in different places. So people were embarking on slave trade in uh, Europe at different places, just as we have mentioned here. So you just need uh, just to know, to note, to say in Europe, uh, slave trade was also taking place. We talk of Dublin, that is the UK. The Marseille was in a uh, uh, in France, Verdun, the same France, break, uh, we talk of uh, Germany as well. So in Europe, in short, it was taking place. So many buyers of slave trade were uh, the Middle East. So it shows that even the whites, not only blacks or black people were uh, sold as slaves, but even the whites, they were also selling each other as slaves in there. Origins of slaves, uh, slave trade in India, uh, it was the result of external influence and uh, internal dynamics. Arabs invader, invaders of Sin, uh, the armies of Umayyad, Commander Muhammad bin Qasim, are reported to have uh, enslaved tens of thousands of Indian prisoners, including both soldiers and uh, civilians. So uh, we see to it, <coughs> to it that uh, even in India, slave trade was there. So it was, when you talk of slave trade, it was not only Africans who were traded. It was there in Europe, it was there in Africa, it was there in India. What about China? Uh, in times of hardships such as the famine, uh, financial difficulties, parents of poor families, they sold some of their children to wealthy homes to be treated as the future brides servants or slaves. So slavery was also done in Japan as well as Korea. So in short, what we can say here is that slavery or slave trade was taking place in almost everywhere. It is an ancient thing that was taking place for different purposes at different times. So we have seen India, China, Korea, Japan, it was there. But then our focus in this topic is the transatlantic slave trade. So that's where we are going to focus much, the transatlantic slave trade. So the, ways, the word trans, it means across. So it was a slave trade across the Atlantic Ocean. Therefore, the transatlantic simply means across, the, across or through the Atlantic. So transatlantic is also called triangular uh, trade triangular trade because of the involvement of three continents of Africa, America, as well as Europe. So the trade arose after the trade contacts between the old uh, world, that is Europe, Africa, and Asia, and the new world, North and South America. So the Atlantic slave trade was divided into two uh, uh, periods, known as the first and second Atlantic systems the eras or periods, uh, the second or uh, the first and the second Atlantic systems. Let's look at the first system of the Atlantic slave trade. It was a trade enslaved of enslaved Africans uh, to South America, American colonies of the Portuguese and Spanish empires. 
it started around 15, around 15.02 and lasted until 15.80. That is the first Atlantic slave trade. Apart from the Portuguese and the Spanish, the Dutch, the English, the French traders also participated in that slave trade. So Portuguese, the Portuguese came under Spanish or Portugal came under Spanish that prohibited it from directly uh, engaging in the slave trade. So at one point in time, Spain defeated Portugal. Therefore, uh, Spain did not allow Portugal to embark directly on slave trade. So it became a target for the enemies of Spain, losing large share uh, to the Dutch, British and uh, French. So uh, with it, we see to it that uh, when Portugal uh, was displaced, therefore other, other people who participated in slave trade also, they embarked on grabbing or possessing that area that was taken by uh, Portugal in slave trade. We have looked at the first Atlantic uh, uh, slave trade. Let us look at the second Atlantic system. It was a group of enslaved Africans by Portuguese, French, and the Dutch traders. So the main destination of this phase were Caribbean colonies and Brazil. So it took place in the 18th century. So in the 1690s, the English were shipping most of the slaves from West Africa and they became the biggest transporters of slave, slaves across the Atlantic. So we see people from England, they were coming to West Africa to get most of the slaves and export them to the Caribbean there, Brazil and many other territories. So let us look at the reasons. What were the reasons for the growth of transatlantic slave trade? Number one, demand for labor. Demand for labor. There was a great need of labor in the mines of gold, silver, in the, and in plantations of coffee, cotton, and sugarcane. So Africans were favored because they were, ad they were adapted to harsh conditions. Uh, for example, yellow fever, malaria, and others. So we see to it that there was high demand for labor to work in the mines and the plantations. So with that, then they favored Africans because Africans, they could resist, they could withstand the harsh conditions. And another one is the industrialization in Europe. Europeans had begun to take part in obtaining slaves as uh, gang laborers for the new world. So due to industrialization, they wanted them to work in the industries as uh, uh, a group of people working so that they uh, they quicken the work. And also profits, uh, because of profits. Slave trade was a profitable business in uh, 1827. Hence, countries engaged in it. So uh, in around, uh, up to around 1827, it was uh, a profitable business, a very big business. It was a little profitable. And high death rate among the American Indians. So more American Indians died of disease introduced into their lands. Africans uh, into their lands by Africans and the Europeans. So more of the uh, Americans, Indians, they died of the disease, new diseases that were brought by the Africans and the, the Europeans. Therefore, they needed more people to uh, replace them or to work there. And also, upsurge of tobacco and rice plantations in um, North America. So, the opening up of tobacco, vast tobacco plantations in the southern states of the USA and the cultivation of rice. So, these plantations, they needed more labor annually. So, they needed more people to work in those plantations that were opened in North America or in the USA. Also, demand for manufactured goods in African society. So African chiefs wanted manufactured goods, hence they exchanged these goods with their own people who were turned into slaves. So these goods include clothes, iron goods, and other drinks. So chiefs also needed guns and gunpowder to maintain and extend their uh, territories. Another factor was the need for, of sugar and cotton production. So the crushing uh, of sugarcane and cotton 
ginning required many laborers. So cotton ginnery allowed a far more rapid and efficient separ separation of cotton uh, from the seed. So multiplication of plantation plantations needed a lot of workers. So there were a lot of sugar and cotton uh, plantations. Many big, when you talk of a plantation, it is a big, big area, a big farm, big farm. So by then there were no machines. So they needed people to work in those machines. Even during harvest, they needed people. Cotton, to separate the cotton from the seeds. Uh, that is ginning, ginning. So separating the, co uh, the seeds from the cotton that also it needed labor, a lot of work. Hence, they needed slaves to do that work. Also death among slaves. Slaves were imported to replace those who died because their population never replaced itself. So uh, slaves, they were imported uh, in order to replace those who died there. So uh, always it was a continuation of that. So this was due to the, a number of reasons. Slaves were discouraged to bear children to ensure maximum labor. Two men were taken for every uh, one woman. So uh, slaves, slave owners said it was cheaper to buy slaves than to breed. So uh, the slave owners, they wanted to maximize those people to be working 20, uh, to be working almost 19 hours 18 or 17 hours uh, a day a very few time of rest uh, seven days a week 365 days a year they wanted those people to be working each and every day therefore for them to have women uh, or to get married it was prohibited so their uh, Replacement, it was to be also by acquiring other slaves. So slaves were not allowed to get married. Replacement of uh, the Portuguese by uh, the British. So the British took over the near monopoly. So the Dutch and the British had, to advan had the advantage of capital and state support through grants. So this enabled them to buy and export slaves on large uh, scale. So replacement of the Portuguese by the British. We have said that uh, the Portuguese were defeated by the uh, Spanish. As a result, the Portuguese they lost the territories which they gained, and the British they gained those territories, and they had that advantage of much money. They had more money which were supported by uh, their governments as well. Again, Increased efficiency in transport. So the shipbuilding en uh, enabled efficient transportation of slaves. So there was that uh, efficiency in uh, transport. So what were the methods that were used in obtaining slaves? Number one, random or unplanned raiding. So attacking and seizing the villages, just coming and attacking the villages up capturing everyone, selecting those who are energetic and leaving the others to say, now we are going, we need these people. So this method was abandoned because it was too physical and exhausting for slave traders. So this system later on, it was abandoned to say, now it was like we are going to hunt. We go to the village and surround them and use physical uh, manhandling. So it was not good at all. So they abandoned it later. Uh, the other way was bribing the chiefs or war setup. So the chiefs were bribed to fight their neighbors. The losers were taken as captives and sold to the slave traders. So this was abandoned because fighting was not good at all. So uh, the other way, apart from raiding, the other way was bribing the chiefs to say, you attack that village. If you defeat them, you capture them, then you sell them to us. So it was done in that way but later on it was also abandoned because in the course of fighting it was found that even energetic people who were needed to be as slaves they were killed during those uh, fightings so it was abandoned and also dictating by powerful chiefs so some chiefs uh, dictated uh, the conduct of slave trade so uh, some chiefs they were uh, dictating they were acting as dictators uh, they were setting up the rules uh, that could uh, uh, force people to be taken as uh, slaves. 
So we have looked at the ways, the ways how uh, slave trades were conducted. So let's look at the conditions of slaves on the journey uh, uh, and uh, at the coast. On their way to the coast, the slaves were uh, whipped, not given enough water and food. They were not uh, given medical attention uh, when they got ill and walked long distances. They were also chained and chained and fastened by uh, the right leg of one to the left leg of the other, and they did not. Uh, they did this to prevent them from uh, running. So they were chained from leg to leg, leg to leg, sometimes neck to neck, neck to neck, like that. So uh, the conditions itself, uh, they were not good at all. They were not good at all. Those who were weak, uh, they could fail to walk. They were maybe sometimes uh, removed from that uh, line or the caravan. Then they were tied to a tree to die there. They were not given water, food, they are just tied there to die there. Uh, so at the coast, they were, they were kept in castles awaiting for shipment. So when they arrived at the, uh, the coast there, they were put like in a hole, uh, packed there. So uh, they were just waiting to, for a day when they would be start to go. So they were pinned down in shackles and kept in dark dungeons. They could see very little or no light and were given enough uh, they were not given enough food. Uh, they were given enough food to keep them alive. If the space was not enough, they were kept in sheds called barracoons. Barracoons. So we see they were packed there. They were just given food there to eat until uh, the, until the day of going. So they uh, fastened to the roof uh, supports by ropes. They were fastened to uh, ropes attached around their necks. So sometimes they were uh, put uh, uh, ropes tied to their necks and fastened uh, uh, in the uh, in up there in the roof. At the setting point, men and women were sold both naked. So the healthy ones were branded by a hot iron uh, to mark them with a uh, to put them a mark. Uh, a mark of a white slave dealer. So there then, when they reached the starting point now, they were striped off their clothes and they were left naked. And there then, they could leave them to just stay there, uh, stay there and selling them. So the healthy one were sold and they were marked with the hot iron, the hot iron, uh, maybe on their hand or maybe uh, anywhere they could uh, as an identity. 